Today we're working on a 2012 F250 four wheel drive. We're going to take this outer tie rod out and put this one in. 13 millimeters, bigger than 13, 15 millimeters. Ah. Ah. support that. Good idea to support that there before you pop it off. Oh, it turns by hand. Wow. Amazing. Let's see. One, one half, two, Same number of turns as Eric had. Be kind to the next guy who has to do an alignment, replace stuff, whatever it is. Anti seize, not a sponsor. Oh, let's loosen this first. Okay, here it goes back in. Notice I'm going counterclockwise because this side's left-handed threads. Two, three. On. I gotta find the torque specs for that. The internet says 67 foot pounds for this size nut and bolt. This seems perfectly reasonable. You always want to double check, make sure in your mind that the torque sounds reasonable for that size fastener. I've seen instances where the manual had a mistake and had, it, it, it listed foot pounds instead of inch pounds and it was obviously way too much but if someone would have tried that actually you would have ended up snapping every single one of them now you take the uh, castle nut and the way that they make these is if it doesn't align up the first time you just keep rotating it until the cotter pin hole lines up with the castle nut let me uh, zoom in for you and show you okay here's the uh, castle nut thing whatever you call it and if you if you push this on and it doesn't line up see how it doesn't line up what what they do is they they align these with the uh, nut so that every time you rotate it it goes to a different one, and whoa, there we, there we go. We only had to rotate it a couple times before it lined up. And now we can take the cotter pin and stick the cotter pin right through. Cotter pin. Now for those of you who've read your owner's manual, this is probably already familiar to you, but it says put a drop of oil 
right between the nut and the washer there. So that way when you torque it down, the washer stays stationary against the wheel and the nut can slide on the washer and you can get it uh, better even torque or uh, even pressure to hold the wheel on when you have all the same torque spec. On all two piece flat wheel nuts, apply one drop of motor oil between the flat washer and the nut. Do not apply motor oil to the wheel nut threads or the wheel stud threads right there. And 150 foot pounds of torque. Do you see the marks on the wheel from the washer? These are designed to be stationary against the wheel and not spin against the wheel. And that's why you need that oil between the washer and the nut there. Where's my 21? Oh, it's on the torque handle. Set on number one. measured back from the center line of the tire, six feet, and I put the measuring tape there. I also measured forward of the center line, six feet, and put a wheel chalk there for reference. And I'm gonna measure the distance between my laser points going backwards and going forwards, and make them the same. That'll target me to uh, zero degrees toe. I'll do this in metric once I get a metric tape measure and join the 20th century. I know it's the 21st century now, but... So I just have uh, my left and right wheel here and my distance is marked off behind the wheel and in front of the wheel here. 81 and 5 sixteenths width for the front. 81. And if you wanted to know the degrees, take the angle whose tangent is 5 sixteenths of an inch divided by 12 feet. So 5 sixteenths divided by 144 and find the angle whose uh, tangent that is equals 0 0.12 degrees. I need to interrupt myself right here and tell you that I made a mistake on which direction is negative and positive. So negative toe is, is towing out, positive toe is towing in. And the spec is minus 0 0.15 to 0 0.35 and I was barely at the edge of the spec at minus 0.12 degrees toe out. So it's it's within spec, not right on, but we're going with it. We're gonna cinch these down and call that aligned. The square part goes in the square hole. Need a deep socket for that. I'm just curious to see what the angle is left wheel versus the right when you're turning all the way to one side. That's the lamest chalk line I've ever seen. Ow! That's a little bit better. <laughs> Right wheel at 34 degrees. Let's make this darker to see it. My left wheel was turned about 39 degrees. Five degree difference. I'm impressed. Ackerman steering for the win. Well, you're probably wondering how they implemented Ackerman steering with the tie rods in front of the pivot points. Well, not too difficult here. You got your tie rod connection outside of the pivot points. So the upper and lower ball joint, right up here and here, is where the steering pivots. This is outside of it. Since that's outside of it, 
you've got your uh, Ackerman geometry right there. If it was, if this was behind it, you just have to have the uh, pivot, the uh, arms come in a bit, so that uh, both wheels will steer around a point. So uh, when you steer all the way to one side, the uh, inside tire of the turn will turn more than the outside tire. And that way you don't scrub when you're doing maneuvers in a parking lot. Put the cap back on. 